Welcome everybody to Bugbears and Brews. My name is Brian and today we're doing encounter recap number 21 of I guess still our Storm King Thunders campaign. It's the same group. However, right now we're kind of doing non-Storm King Thunder stuff. But we'll still run with the name for now. Uh, so started off with us uh, in the Netherese woods in the Shadowfell and there was a guy that was just kind of lost uh, just looking around clearly taking everything in, but not there all mentally. Um, a couple people went up to him and tried to like snap at him, wave your hand, speak to him. There wasn't any reaction until uh, at one point he suddenly noticed Ivar and gave Ivar a gigantic hug uh, and then pulled him back at arm's length and then just kind of continued about his business. Um, he wouldn't say anything or uh, interact with anybody else besides that. And eventually the guy started wandering away and it's at this point that there was a uh, hill dwarf that came out of the woods uh, from like a game trail and turned out to be a guest player who might actually be a long-term player, uh, Micah, who was playing Unin, the hill dwarf monk. So there's some introductions there, a little bit of role playing on how uh, Micah got there, or Unin got the, to the uh, Shadowfell and dealt with him getting transported by a uh, some sort of scheming wizard. And so he's fresh to the Shadowfell and just trying to find a way back to the Material Plane. Uh, after that roleplay bit was done, uh, you guys were like, oh crap, our wandering lone guy is uh, just continuing along the, the woods there by himself. So you guys ran up there, tried to interact with him once more, nothing happened. And so uh, Ivar was like, hey, you know what? Somebody give me a potion of restoration, which you guys did. You dug one out, handed, him to, handed it to the guy. The guy didn't, he went to go dump it out. Uh, and then you guys are like, hey, drink, and you you uh, push it up to his lips, and then from there he drank, and uh, he restored back to normal. And I should say before that happened, though, uh, Thessalon tried to mind fuck him, and that didn't work. Thessalon actually wound up getting pushed out of his mind and taking a lot of damage for getting into there. So, like, the basic thoughts he could get into, and it's just really basic, weird stuff. Um, like, oh, look, what is green? Here's green. Uh, what does green taste like? Those kinds of weird type things. Um, but really low-level thought capacity. When he tried to dig in deeper, that's when he got kicked out. So the guy restored back to normal. Uh, he definitely seemed in a kind of recovering state, and he wasn't fully there. Uh, go ahead and, like, you know, um, digging into... What he was doing out there, the most you could tell you is last thing he remembered, he was at a town uh, up above, or uh, not too far from you guys. The town's name is Elm Chase. Uh, and he remembers being at his, uh, like a town community center and enjoying a feast. And then from there, he just kind of blanked out. He's not sure how long he's been out. He's not sure what he's doing out this far. He's not sure what's going on with the rest of the town as a whole. But that's as much as he could tell you. Uh, he then wanted to go back to town, and you guys, uh, not really having much else better to do, thought it'd be good to escort him. And when you got to the town, I mean, the town has a nice, uh, you know, had a nice wooden palisade all around it. There were no guards whatsoever. It wasn't like they were off doing something. Um, there was just no guards whatsoever. The town was silent. And so from there, um... Havoc helped Ivar over the wall, and Gramak just scaled the wall without issue. And as those two landed on the, other, the top side of the palisade, they looked around and they saw that the town was definitely uh, still occupied. There was all sorts of people going about their daily business, but those people were doing it with like a glaze over their eyes and just focused on their task. Nobody saying a word to anybody, nobody waving, winking, saying hi, nothing like that. And so they were just all going about their daily tasks. So like the, the people in the blacksmith shop were still hammering away at the blacksmith stuff. The textile people were still doing their sewing and that kind of thing. Uh, bakers still making pies and all that kind of crap. So all the day-to-day -day stuff was still going on, but everybody was just kind of glazed over. Um, so with that, the duo walked to the front gate, and they were getting ready to remove whatever they had to do to go get the front gate open when they realized the front gate wasn't even locked. It just was closed, that's all. So they swung the doors open, and as they did so, all the townspeople turned towards them and started coming in at them, and they didn't say anything. They weren't like moving like in creepy unison step type deal, but they all just kind of came in as like a single unit type deal, and uh, eventually one of them said, you know, hey, you know, what are you guys doing here? 
uh, and they say, oh, we brought back Shundak, who was the the guy they found in the woods. Like, oh, we brought back Shundak. Like, oh, that's great. Let's go ahead and, uh, you know, let's take you to the councilman. He'll want to thank you properly. And so everybody kind of felt strong-armed into going. Um, but eventually they, they're like, you know what, let's, let's just go, be done with it, and get out of this creepy-ass town. Uh, they also did want to talk to the councilman to kind of figure out what was going on in the town. Uh, from there, went up to the main community center type uh, house there, building, whatever you want to call it. And the party was like, you know, they, they wanted the party to go inside. The party was kind of hesitant about doing so. Because at this point, a bunch of kids came, I'm going to say running up, but they came up to Broomy and wanted Broomy to come play with them. Broomy wanted no part of it whatsoever. She's like, they're creepy. I don't want to do it. Uh, and so she decided to stay with you guys. You guys also uh, reinforced that idea of you don't want to go play with those creepy kids. Heading into the building, though, uh, everybody was had their arms out and you know ready to kick some ass. And they're like, "Whoa, you know, what are you doing? You're going into a community center. Let's not be like that. You know, why are you like this?" And there's a lot of pushback from you guys about it. And they weren't saying you couldn't go in armed. You just couldn't go in with your arms out. And so, begrudgingly, you guys put away your arms and went into the feast hall. Uh, inside the feast hall, there was uh, two people. There was the Councilman Jarvin, and there was Lady Mega, who actually has the worst name given by a name generator thing I've ever used, but we had we ran with it. Um, and those two seem to be a little bit higher capacity than the others. Um, talking to them, Lady Mega herself seemed very, very high level capacity. And then Councilman, Jar Councilman Jarvin seemed, he pr seemed like he had a little bit of something going on with them, but not a lot. Uh, and there's a lot of, you know, you guys questioning what happened to the town? Why is it like this? And Jarvin was just like, you know, what's wrong? Everybody's happy. Everybody's going about doing their work. The town is being more productive than it's ever been. Uh, you know, just what, what's wrong with this? I don't see anything wrong with this. And you guys kept going, they're, they're pleading about the, the uh, town not having any freedom of choice or anything like that. And the councilman's like, you know, we don't hold anybody here on our own. They're, they can go about their business, do what they want. So I don't get what the big deal is. Um, and it started escalating pretty quick. You guys were claiming, you know, the, these villagers are being abused. Uh, the councilman's saying there's nothing going wrong on here. Everything's all right. You know, what's the big deal? They're being productive. Um, and it was starting to escalate when the councilman's just like, you know what? We're going to agree to disagree. Uh, you return Chunduk to us. Let's at least thank you properly, and you guys can go about your business. You don't like the way things are done here, you can leave. Uh, so he said, you know, well, you're welcome to join us for our, our feast, um, and then you can stay for the night if you want, and then be on your way in the morning. You guys agreed to the feast, but you just said, you know, you're going to stay for the feast, but you're going to eat your own food, drink your own drinks. Uh, and then it, he agreed to that, and as soon as you guys agreed and you started to sit down, like, all the townsfolk just started filing into this room. And the second they hit that threshold, they all started acting like completely normal people, chatting, laughing, having a good time. Uh, drinks are flowing. People are, you know, chatting around. Uh, Thessalon went into a mind of a, a young lady, and she was, you know, swooning over some boy that she had a crush on. And all the typical things you would see, like, in a normal town feast. Uh, and this really threw you guys off. Uh, from there, as the feast wrapped up, people started heading up to Councilman Jarvin to thank him. And as they were walking away, before they hit the exit of the feast hall, they were back to that glazed over kind of catatonic state. It's at this point that Ibar was like, you know what? Let me go up and talk with Jarvin like up close and see what's going on. And as he got up there... Uh, he, you know, Jarvin's like, count, or uh, Ivar's like, you know, there's something going on here. People are leaving, you know, leaving far different than they came in. And the people, when they come in, they're way different than they are outside. 
what's going on. And it's at this point that Ivar looks down and he notices that on the table there is this uh, kind of enclosure uh, of like decorated frosted glass and inside there's purple light floating around all throughout. And at that point, uh, Ivar does a complete 180 on his attitude and he starts thinking, oh, you know what, this actually isn't a bad idea. There's all sorts of, you know, these people being productive, you know, they're getting fed well, they get to have a good time, cut loose each night. What's wrong with this? So he goes back to the table and he's like, you know what, or, you know, back to the party. He's like, no, guys, we got this all wrong. Let's go up there, thank Councilman Jarvin and, you know, maybe stay for a few nights. And that really threw everybody off because Ivar went up there really like, let's figure out what the hell's going on. And now all of a sudden he's like, this is good. Let's hang out. Let's do some stuff. Uh, you know, let's party and let's be part of this town maybe and see what's going on. Uh, heading up there, the group was a little confrontational. Uh, Yunin did the same 180. And uh, at that point, um, Pavic decided to try to grab the butterfly because part of the things that you guys, one of the things you guys needed for Alderman was the wings, or uh, I think it was the, the wings of a purple night butterfly. And seeing a butterfly shaped thing floating around in a frosted jar, he assumes it's a purple night butterfly, which it was. You know, I'm not going to try to, you know, leave it hanging on there. It's a purple night butterfly. Uh, and so as soon as that happened, like everybody that was left in the room, the guards, Jarvin, Lady Mega, they all flipped out and started combat. Um, was it Thessalon? Thessalon tried to do a charm person on uh, Lady Mega and Councilman Jarvin. It didn't seem to have any impact on him. However, it then reverted uh, uh, Ivar and Unin to be back to their normal selves. So something with them just disrupted and they, they were able to return back to their normal selves. And as they return to their normal selves, uh, you know, combat's going on. People are fighting all over the place. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is all due to that damn butterfly. Go ahead and get that butterfly. And so uh, hearing that, all the people that were, uh, you know, attacking the party then started going into like a protect the butterfly mode. And uh, the butterfly itself uh, seems to be kind of more of an evil asshole than it is a, a standard uh, butterfly. So combat continued out. Uh, the butterfly ends up getting squished. Um, Jarvin messes some people up, but, uh, you know, nothing that people can't live through. And then once a butterfly is down, uh, the, everybody starts returning back to normal. So Jarvin starts going back to normal. The guards start going back to normal. Lady Migo, though, she stays kind of like this weird type person. I don't want to say fanatic because she wasn't a fanatic, but like this weird mentality that she had going on there. And uh, so you guys tied up Lady Mega, you tied up the councilmen, the guards you kind of let be on their own because you figured between Mega and the councilmen, those two were the ones that had a higher level of you know mental function going on. So they're probably the ringleaders of something that's going on there. Uh, and then talking with them, Mega wouldn't talk about anything. You guys uh, wound up torturing her. Uh, Unin shoved his fist in her mouth. That way she can't cast any spells. I think somebody broke her thumb so she can do somatic components. Uh, in the end, you guys wound up killing her just because she wouldn't talk. She started getting really hostile, biting on people. Um, Jarvin really didn't like you guys, uh, mainly because you were blaming him for something that he wasn't in control of. Um, and it turns out that he brought Lady Miga here because some of his other uh, councilmen of other towns were talking about, oh, Lady Miga has this great menagerie. You got to check it out. All sorts of rare and, rare and wondrous animals. And so he brought it here to kind of uh, give his people something to, you know, look forward to. And it turns out that she brought that Purple Night Butterfly, which uh, took over the town. Uh, you guys really didn't like that. That's the way it happened. But, uh, you know, you're kind of debating what the hell to do with Jarvin. And in the end, you decided to leave it up to the town. Uh, the town said, you know what? Jarvin was a good guy before this. He wasn't like a you know great stand-up guy, but he was a decent ruler. Uh, he messed up. Um, so we're not going to kill him. We're just going to exile him. A couple people thought that was a bad idea, thought it might come back to haunt them. We'll see what happens there. 
Um, and then from there, the town decided to elect Shundak, Shundak as the temporary councilman because he's been the one out of the haze as long, you know, for the longest amount of time. Not a good decision. Uh, I shouldn't say not. Not a good reason for choosing him considering he was only out for a matter of hours before everybody else. But it is what it is. Uh, you guys did get your purple night butterfly. You sent that back to Aldevin. Uh, you didn't check for a response yet, but you did send it over there. Uh, and then there's some of the info that you guys found out uh, before heading out of town. So the info that you gathered is what's left of the Shadahar Kai uh, is in a they're either in small nomadic bands or they're in their like their main encampment, which is past the trackless sands. Uh, near the edge of the Volto Mountains. So that's Brumi's race. So something happened to Sharda Harkai. They didn't mention what happened. Um, and then as far as gathering information about the overall governance of the area of the Shadowfell you're in, uh, there is a small governance called the Council of Three, which is made up of the Netherese, a tiefling, and an elf. The uh, Netherese is na uh, called Lord of the Lost, Gustav Nan uh, Nandrin. The Tiefling is a male, uh, honorable counselor of the people, Langdon Whiptail. And the Elf is uh, the Lady of What Is To Be, and she's Rami Brava. And they came to council out of Gloomhelm. I almost said Gloomhaven because I'm excited for the Gloomhaven board game I'm getting in August, but Gloomhelm. Um, so, it's a matter of where we're going next week. You guys can double back to, like, the Society of the Kraken, uh, which is down to the south, back the way you guys came. You guys can try to go across the trackless sands, try to get to the whole Shadow Harkai people, something along those lines. As far as the Purple Night Butterfly, Purple Night Butterfly was a custom uh, creature. I took an Intellect Devourer and a Elder Brain kind of crossed them, got rid of any stunned capacities, replaced them with Enthrall. I liked it, and I, I liked that you guys picked up on the, the butterfly. Uh, you knew there was something up with the butterfly, and so, you know, having somebody get enthralled by it and then understanding what was going on. I I didn't want this to become a multi, uh, multi-session multi encounter, so I kind of forced a couple of things and said, you know, here's what you discover. Uh, I like the way it worked. I wish I would have made the butterfly a little bit more hardy because once you guys uh, started getting a hold of the butterfly, you know, I made the butterfly, I cast Sanctuary on it, and I was like, oh, I thought it was good to go. But I forgot Sanctuary doesn't protect against area of effect spells, so the butterfly went down pretty quick. That said, uh, I really liked the black guard that I used um, from the, that's the first time I used a monster is out of the Volo's Guide, which is uh, Counselor Jarvin was a black guard, and I thought he had some really good burst damage for you guys. Really sustainable hit points. Uh, kind of gave you guys a little run for your money there when he was up and running. Really like the creepy vibe in this. I think you guys dug on it too. Uh, interested to see where you guys are going. Are you going to press forth? Uh, I'm guessing you're probably going to go through to the trackless um, trackless sands and go across and try to find the Shadow Heart Guy people. I might be wrong. You might try to double back and go to the uh, Society of the Kraken to then go across the the uh, the sea there to the main uh, capital city, Gloomhelm. Who knows? Uh, sorry with this went a little bit long, but a lot of roleplay type stuff in this, uh, this session here. So see you guys on Wednesday. Bye.